Well, I just finished Mark Weber's book Ozzy Greed My Formula 1 Journey by Mark Weber and this is a short review for this book. Do not expect that much of technical stuff. The only things technical is just some hints here and there about a different couple of topics such as how they build a car around a driver, how much driver physicality like height play a role in a sport, how teams and drivers prepare for a race, visibility factor at high speed, the tricks uh, which Mark used to improve his racecraft, his sensitivity to tire and how freely a rule change affected his driving style. When Mark and Seb were teammates with each other, their reaction time were always a main talking point between fans. In this book, Mark provides an explanation for that reaction time difference between him and Seb. Some drivers have some superstitious beliefs and routines. Mark is not exception either. So uh, he talks about his beliefs and his routine when he wants to get in a car. Also, he talks about mental strengths and being in the zone at the time of racing. Then he gets personal and talks about Queen Bien in Australia. He talks about his personal life, childhood, family, his motivation to win even at early ages, sports he played, his school, his friends, his memories, his first car, memories of that car, and many things like that. At one point in his book, he talks about his first big crash and Ayrton Senna's death. He articulated in a such a great way to show what these two events had effects on him and his family. The next thing that we can talk about and review it is his relationship with Anne Neil. You see, Anne was his peer at first, but later on become his girlfriend. But for Mark, there were two problems with this. First, he turned the professional relationship to a personal relationship, and the second is the age gap. The age gap between them is uh, about more than 10 years, I think it's about 13 years, I'm not sure actually. For so many reasons, they tried to hide this relationship and they had hard time to reveal this relationship to parents. But they stayed together and they are happy with each other and I wish them all the best. If you want to do well in motorsport, you have to move to UK. Mark's journey from Australia to UK is quite a journey and he uh, tell his stories in such a way that you really enjoy. I was uh, quite please when I was reading uh, his junior categories the detail he was talking about that was quite good there is always a sponsorship problems for drivers and Marx is not exception in that regard money and funding problems were always an issue for Marx his parents were not that wealthy so he talks about how he overcome this problem in different stage of his career there are interesting stories about this and how people like Anne, Paul Estadors, Bernie Nicholson, Peter Windsor try to help Mark to overcome these problems. One of the parts that I really like is his time at Mercedes and Norbert Haug management style. The reason is, he talks about how Mercedes set a standards of responsibilities for employees and how they have to behave when they are working for Mercedes-Benz. Plus also he was talking about uh, Mercedes strategy to choosing driver lineup and other stuff. Even at that point, Mark still had a long way to go to become a professional racing driver. He had a different... No, let's say he had a wrong attitude toward racing. Bernie Schneider helped him to become a better race driver. Believe it or not, he talks about Michael Schumacher quite a lot. He talks about like how Michael inspired him to go to the gym to become a fitter driver. He talks about uh, stuff like Monaco controversy, Michael come back to racing and so many other topics. The other talking point is Mark Weber crashes. He has some of the most spectacular crashes between racing drivers. He explained his crash inside and outside of the racetrack. So in this book you can get a better understanding of these crashes plus how this crash uh, had an effect on him and he, in his professional career. The next point is about how he find his way to Formula 1. He talks about Flavio Briatore management style, the influence he has on uh, people and how he negotiated with him for a seat. You can get a full story of his first F1 race, first F1 points, first F1 win, first F1 pole position in, uh, in the book so no worry about that, he talks quite good on that regard. My favorite part before he joins Red Bull was about his time at Williams and I was surprised by the amount of things that were going on at Williams and you can find out about reasons that made him to left the team. The other thing that was quite surprising was his relationship with his dogs. If you listen to any podcast with Mark Weber, 
there's quite high chance that he mentioned his dogs he talks about his dogs in his books too and you can find out that uh, how much his dogs uh, had an effect on his professional life which was quite uh, interesting for me when he joins red bull there is not much going on in the team his time with dc he didn't talk about it that much and i think everyone who buy this book wants to read from this chapter onward it means when sebastian fettel joins red bull and become teammate with mark weber there are a lot of highlights when we look back at red bull and we see mark and sebastian being teammates with each other official media try to uh, show malaysia 2013 as a tipping point but there are a lot more than to it than just malaysia in this book you can get a good view on this topic i'm not gonna say great view because in my opinion when it was about seb seb made a mistake did something wrong mark prepared a 10 page essay but when it was about mark he didn't talk too much about it so i'm not quite happy about how mark articulated some stories i have to say he was quite outspoken about dr helmut marco christian horner's management style and how red bull behavior was towards seb i was shocked about his relationship the depths of his relationship with dietrich mateschitz i think he had a better relationship with dietrich than anyone else in that team there are a lot of talking points about his time at red bull some of them are his first F1 win, first pole, Sebastian attitude when Mark was winning, team orders at Turkey, Silverstone, Brazil, Malaysia and other internal communication, his letters to Dietrich on different difficult controversial circumstances, his more than usual PR role at Red Bull, Montreal controversy, Silverstone front wing controversy and so on. As a fan I always wanted to know how much those talks and news about Mark's joining Ferrari was real. He talks a little bit about that. But the surprising part for me was he talks about his relationship with Luca Di Montezemolo more than so many other people in Red Bull. There are a couple of times in this book that he talks about how Seb was as a driver. Then we come to the last part of the book. He talks about his retirement from F1 and saying goodbye to Red Bull Racing and Formula 1 and then joining Porsche for WEC season. I actually quite enjoyed this part because he was talking about... Uh, so many great points about WEC for example teammate relationships mentality in a sports car racing versus F1 yeah that was it there are still a lot of good points and talking points we could talk about from this book but I'm gonna stop it here it is a good read for sure you're going to enjoy it also there is an audiobook for this book so you can listen to audiobooks too if you read this book or you have a question about it or you want to talk about Marx and Seb or anything Please comment down below so we can talk about different stuff with each other.